Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and welcome back to um, a, another um, Lamag. Let's make a game. You guys, seriously, like if I go over here to my analytics, the response to that video alone in, in about 12 hours was 2,500 views. Crazy. And it's 70% higher than any other content that I release. What? Were you guys just like waiting for me to start programming again? But that's cool. But I mean, I didn't I didn't really have anything except just to play around with code for the night. So I mean, that's, that's huge. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let me start some background music here. And we will get started. Um, this is another Lamag, but it's going to be a little bit different. I'm not working on anything specific. I'm actually going to go and grab a, um, a tutorial from here. Creating uh, a future or uh, a furniture placement system. And this is uh, posted by Ego Moose. And it was originally posted over on Scripting Helpers. Both links will be in the description down below. Be sure to check out the description. A lot of you were like, oh my gosh, where's your game code? Where's my lumber? Where's this? Where's that? It's all in the description. I, I promise. If you're if you're looking for my book, down in the description. If you're looking for like one of my other contents, my all, all my other stuff. It's in the about page of the channel. So right now, look down there, hit the little show more button or the show button, and there's a ton of description. That's that's what like the analytics is looking for, you're looking for that first. And that's that's where you're gonna find stuff. So let's get started. Um, jump over here to developers. I'm just gonna create a new game off of a base plate. <laughs> uh oh, did I select it? Yeah, I selected it. Okay, cool. Create a game. Any ideas? No, I have no clue at all. I'm gonna make this public so you guys can come in here and play with it and have fun. And we're gonna call this uh, Lamag um, Furniture Furniture Movement System. And I hope you're okay with me going through a tutorial with you guys because I actually um, I'm I'm horrible at wait what is that? That's not what we wanted. Get back. Get back. Do, 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 do. From scripting helpers found here. There we go. That's the original. So I'll leave that in the description down below. Creating a, few, uh, a furniture placement system. One of the most common requests uh, is from blogs is to decoration system saves, uh, which I've shared before. Um, sorry, I've got to save that, and we got to go back to create and edit. There we go. So we're just gonna hit edit on this. And off she goes. I can I can kill that screen. I should be able to. Where's Studio? Oh, Studio's loading right now. So, um, by the way, to everyone who was in the Discord last night while I was just messing around with the sounds, these songs are what I went and downloaded so you guys could hear them in the background. And that's why I was inside the uh, the YouTube Studio Audio Library. Fade. Fade, fade, fade. Okay. One of the most common requests that I get on the blog is specifically decoration systems. I've shed away from the topic. I've sh shed, shed away, steered away from the topic uh, in the past as there is no singular correct way to do it. With that being said, I think it's a good exercise for all game developers to go through and will potentially place a role in, and will potentially place a role in the furniture blog post blah 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 okay so like let's get into it object oriented programming or programming or OOP sorry the music is a little bit loud for me I'm gonna turn it down just slightly so it's not overpowering um, OOP is all about writing classes uh, which in this context is very fancy synonym for the word blueprint um, we can then use the blueprint to create objects that have certain properties and methods. Uh, if for some words sound familiar from, if some of the words sound familiar to you, that's because they are. The objects that you will be interacting with, such as parts, humanoid, motor 6D, and so forth, are by design an OOP paragram, paradigm. These objects, oh god, this is so boring. Why am I reading all this? 
Um, properties used for characteristics of an object, such as part, have stuff like size, which suggests it's been defined on how large or small the object is. In turn, these properties often play a role in the behavior of the actions associated with said object, uh, which is defined by a method. For instance, the method get mass returns the mass of a part, along with other things, a variety of sizes. Thus, we can see... Okay, I'll show you what I'm actually reading here. Pew. Um, da -da 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 -da, sizes... But uh, right here, right, right. sizes, which thus can be an example of a clear connection between a method and a property. Now that we have some terminologies down, I'd like to future discussion, blah, 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 blah between objects, a class definition. I really don't want to read all of this because it's just reading. Um, but overreaching concept of position in vector three as its values and similar sense of um, blah, 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 blah. See, this is why I wrote my book much different. Um, we can treat these almost like function parameters. In different OOPs, there's a more functional approach to the same task approach to the same task as seen by the code example down below. Uh, local part equals instant new part. Here, let's uh, let's grab this code. Boom. Hold on, maybe. Boop. Copy. Am I going to be able to copy this directly into Studio? I wonder. Let's go. Drop a part. Actually, we don't need to drop a part. We can create a new. Um, what did I just delete? Okay, I deleted the part. I saw this base plate and I'm like, oh no, I just deleted something and I don't know what it was. Uh, let's go script and we'll do a regular script. Yep, I knew it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's going to be annoying. Play. Seven and nine, but where where did it place the part? Hmm. Okay, I don't see a part, but we have a part of some kind. Something something became a part. All right, let's go back over to the script. Let's see what this is actually doing. Oh, and we will zoom in a little bit so you can actually see what I see. Uh, local park equals instant dot new part. So instance is an actual function. New is a variable of that function, and we're creating a part. Part dot size is a property of part. Uh, vector is an instance, or uh, it's an object, and we're creating a new object. Uh, one two ten. Part dot material equals wood, and we print part get mass. So, do, 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 do. notice the capital G on get mass. So the first one is get mass, which should be uh, point six point nine 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 nine. So then um, we create a function called get mass, and they do print get mass part size part material part material dot density. Okay, so local function get mass takes in a size and a material. Uh, local volume is size x times size y times size z. Uh, size is a vector. Uh, local density. Uh, density is a material. Um, so physical properties of new material, which is whatever the current material is, dot density. Did it actually create a new physical property? So then it returns density times uh, size. So um, let's see. We didn't actually put the part anywhere, did we? It was just a new part. So it's, it's off in the void. Um, what we could do is um, part dot parent equals workspace part dot position equals vector three dot new um, zero comma ten comma zero part dot anchored equals I think it's automatically false but just in case it'll fall down there we go so we uh, took some extra properties and basically just threw them out there. Boom. That's what it looks like. Oh, it's great wood. Nice. So, um, by using the built-in, we have 6.99999. So it's very close. It's like 0 0.000001 off. The rounding, it'd go up to seven anyway. So we can actually do ceilings and floors. So, um, print part dot get mass. We can do math dot ceiling 
what, what is it? Math. Math dot ceiling. And then give it the number. Like that. I think I need one more in there. Like that. Maybe. So it should round up. Maybe. Uh oh. I forgot to close something. Is that one there? That one there? Oh, one more. There we go. Stop and play. Do, 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 do. It didn't do it. Why didn't it do it? No! Stop. Um, what about uh, absolute numbers? Or whole numbers? Dot ceiling number x returns the smallest integer larger than or equal to. Oh, wait. Print part, I get mass. Are these printing backwards? Hold on, I'm just gonna do this. Um, custom dot. I don't know if I can do a dot right there. Here, I can do a comma, comma. And then over here, we're going to print built in like that. That way we can see the differences in the two. So the built-in returns seven, the custom returns 6.99999. Okay, cool. So this one down here, the custom is the one that we need to do ceiling at dot seal. And then add in additional parentheses like this. Whoops, like that, I think. Yeah. And that should return seven. So now we have seven and seven. The same, same. So I, I think the built-in might be doing that automatically. We don't know. Anyhow. Okay, uh, moving on, because I totally got distracted by the code. <laughs> uh, fade. Uh, ignoring the fact that the method is, is built in and thus didn't have to be defined, the only difference was that in the functional approach we had to plug in the parts properties as arguments manually. In the methods case, we didn't have to plug in any arguments because Lua knew that we are calling the method on a specific object and thus grabbed the properties needed directly from it. A method is just the name we give the function that functions that are applied to a specific object. For example, of what this might look like, function part get mass. The above code is referencing something called self. Self refers to part, or the original that it was given. Understandably, it seems, oh, 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 this is going to teach you modules, like uh, functionalities and stuff like that. So we could actually, <clears throat> excuse me. Ooh, I burped. No sneeze this time. Congratulations to everybody that got their wish yesterday because I sneezed in that video. Function part get mass. Volume equals self dot size x self dot size y self dot size z materials is self oh huh, got it uh i hope that makes sense for you um oh by the way before i forget um huge shout out to ego moose okay i want to i want to make sure that he gets the shout out for this because it's his tutorial boom right there and hold on let me go back one right here. So, Roblox developer. Huge stats. Beautiful. Go follow him. He's going he's gonna to be famous one day. <laughs> no, he, he's, he is famous in our eyes. <laughs> so, um, here was another question. Am I a Roblox developer or am I a Roblox YouTuber? Who knows? I'm kind of in between. So, you know, whenever there's this Roblox developer or Roblox YouTuber fight going on, I'm like, eh. Just be quiet, code. Just be quiet. Sit down. We'll be good. Okay. Next. Uh, you might know the uh, self. Uh, the first argument passed is always the object of the method that is, it is called on. When defining um, a method with syntax form, it is function class my method parameter one parameter two. The parameter uh, that will represent the object is forcibly given the name self and shouldn't be defined in the brackets like any other extra parameters. So if I ran some part colon get mass, then the argument that would be passed, uh, that would replace self would be some part. 
Um, as a side note, either due to personal preference or familiarity with other languages um, that use self, <gasps> this, such as this, I use this all the time in jQuery and JavaScript, just so you know. So it refers to the object that called whatever function I create. I guess I do object-oriented programming, but I do it in scripting, JavaScript and jQuery, so, and Ajax and SQL and Cold Fusion. Uh, Soden programmers may wonder if there is a way to define the parameter in the name. This is possible, the equivalent, okay, I'm just gonna take a wild guess and say self equals this, or this equals self. Um, programmers may wonder if there's a way to use different parameter name. This is possible, and the equivalent code would be something as follows. The self argument is still passed, but its parameter name is no longer hidden and can be changed. Self. So, part dot get mass self volume self 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 self. So I guess you could do you could come in like this. So let's see here. Uh, could we define part colon? get mass. I don't know if that's going to work. That's not going to work because part would be, huh? Wait, how did you find it over here? Part dot get mass. Uh, part dot name equals my new part part. Can I do it like that and then give it a function? Part dot get mass equals local not equals function. It could be an anonymous function self. Hmm. <laughs> Then we could do something like eesh. Grab all of this stuff right here. Throw it in there. Enter, enter. And we could end that. I don't know if that's gonna work. That might not work. Function self. So if I said uh, local this equals self, I should now be able to go mm, this dot size, right? This, I have no clue if this is going to work. I probably, this probably isn't going to work. Uh, boink, this dot material dot density. And it returns that, so. I don't know if that's gonna work. Yeah, dot get mass is not a valuable, valid member of part. Hmm. Even though we defined it as a function of above. Oh well, here, let's continue on. I completely messed that up. Uh, control Z it. There we go. There, good. I think. Yeah, it should be fine. And you didn't see any of that, did you? Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. <laughs> I'll keep going. Um, basically, going up there and trying to create this didn't work because it's not modular, so. Um, the self argument is passed. I guess, hold on. Let's see, let's see if that will work. And I'll be sure to show you this time. So if we define this, part, it's not gonna like that. Yeah, it's intended to index global part a nil value. Get rid of that. Let's carry on. I understand the concept, I hope you do too because I've created functions before. So hopefully 
Uh, oh, I guess it would just be an equivalent of code. Um, it would be my personal recommendation, however, that you do not use this as it could cause some confusion with uh, other forms of readability and perspective. All right, so how do we write a class? The last piece of the puzzle is something called a constructor. A constructor creates an object uh, from a class and returns it back to us with a set of filled in properties. A very common constructor that I can think of, all of the built-ins have dot new. Uh, but for other examples might be vector three dot from normal ID or C frame dot angles. A class can have multiple constructors and can be named just about anything. Sometimes uh, when we write these constructors, they have parameters that help us fill in the properties and other times they don't. Uh, it's completely up to you as the programmer and dependent on what the class is for. So I will give you a good example of this because somebody inside the comments was asking me about um, C frames. So uh, I'm just going to delete this whole thing. If we do C frame dot new enter this right here has multiple, multiple uh, constructions. Okay. Um, let's see here. Can I do this? This is a, this is a bad example. We might have to go over to the website to show cframe dot new cframe from. So all of these are functions and or um, constructors. Here they are over here. Oh gosh, you can't see the pop up, can you? Hold on. Is there any way for me to like share the screen and not? just the SDK. There we go. Let's try that. Fade. You're going to see some stuff coming into view. Hopefully you will see the pop up this time. There we go. C frame. So all of these are constructors. I don't know if you can see them or not. They're teeny tiny. They're up there. You, you might have to maximize the screen and look uh, if you're on mobile. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyhow, this one right here, the dot new, uh, if we go down, 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 there are six kind of constructors. The first one, just leave it blank. There's nothing inside the parentheses and it'll create a C frame. So C frame dot new just makes a C frame. The next one is a, um, constructor with vector three pose X, Y, Z coordinate. It'll give you a C frame with the X, Y, Z coordinate that you give it the next one. Uh, it gives a. X, Y, Z coordinate of where that position is. You give it a second X, Y, Z coordinate of where you want it to look at. So that part is created and then it looks towards that direction that you wanted. That's where you give it two parameters of vector. Next is you just give it an X, Y, Z number. It will create um, a positional uh, C frame. Next is X, Y, Z first part, X, Y, Z second part, and uh, third part is what is the what is that fourth one? Q W. X Y Z, X Y Z, and then W. What is W? I have no clue what W is. Anyhow, that's a constructor. And then this one is the actual matrices. It's a, a four-dimensional matrix of what a C frame can be. So the first one is the position. The second one is the front. Um, or it is left. So on your X axis, this is the left angle. Where, where is your left at? Uh, and then this, this, these three sets of numbers are your Y, which is the up and down axis. And then these three numbers are actually back. They're not forward. So you kind of have to do like a negative of those three numbers to get it to go forward. But you can, anyhow, those are the six kind of constructors. And um, I stated this inside my book. So if you're here because of the book, the the book, I tell you guys, don't listen to me as far as C frames. I have messed up C frames so many times and I've, I've still have yet to wrap my head around the concept of what C frames can be or can do. Um, this is much better because I can just flip back and forth in between these and you can see it. I think I'll do this from now on. Hello, JavaScript. 
I don't want to restart my system. Thank you. Um, da -da -da, that wasn't JavaScript. Creating furniture. Let's move on. Okay, so um, da -da -da -da, constructor. Let's take a look how the staff might have written a constructor in Lua. We'll break this down into break this down, break down the parts. And here's an example of one of the copies of the vector three constructor. So local vector three. This right here says vector three is going to be an array. Vector three dot underscore underscore index equals vector three. This points itself to itself. Constructor. So here's the first constructor where you give it the function dot new and it takes in x, y, z. Um, local self equals set meta table blank comma vector three. Gosh, meta tables are so confusing. I mean, I probably understand the concepts and how to do them, but here we go. Self dot x or equals x or zero. So if x is not defined, it's a zero. Self dot y equals y or zero. Uh, self dot z equals z or zero. So if you don't give it anything, it'll return all zeros, zero, zero, zero. Um, you could do comma, number, comma, number, and it would only give it the Y and Z axis. So for example, let's do this. Uh, blah, blah equals new, no, vector three dot new, comma, three, comma, three. I think that will work. Workspace, expected identifier, parsing example, got, comma. So it does expect a number, three comma three comma three. Do, 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 do. There you go. So um, no errors on that one. We could actually come back in and say, uh, print blah dot x, copy, 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 y, and z. So this is what the constructors are. And I'm gonna go, uh, one comma two comma three, just like that. And right down here we get one two three. I don't know if you can see that it's kind of small. Ah, yay! We can zoom stuff. Code beautiful. Okay. So then, um, what this does, it goes local self equals set meta table of the object that we are doing, and then self dot x equals x x y z, and then we return it. We return self. Okay. Not quite sure I understand that. Uh, to some of you, this might make perfect sense, and to some of you, it might not. I'm the latter. It might not make sense to me. The key difference between those who understand and those who do not should be familiarity with meta tables. Not familiar. This is a big topic in of itself, but luckily we only really need to understand the aspect of underscore underscore index meta table uh, meta method to understand this code. The best dumbed down explanation I've heard of meta tables is events, but for tables. And this particular app, this is particularly applicable to underscore underscore index meta method. The underscore underscore index meta method is fired when a non-existing key in a table is indexed, meaning read, not written. Don't understand. Local T equals cats and dogs. How far along are we? We're at 28 minutes. Jeez, I might have to continue this on tomorrow. Uh, local cats equals t dot cats. Local dogs equals t dot dogs. Not fired because value exists for key. Not fired because value exists for key. T dot turtles equals 60. Not fired because we are writing. Print t dot hamsters. Fired because value does not ex does not exist for key. Okay. <clears throat> the meta method is fired when a non-existing key is in in the table is indexed, meaning not written. Oh, okay. So, okay, okay. This makes more sense. Copy this. Any ideas? No clue. 
Okay, so up here we define what T is. T is an array of objects or a table. Uh, and the first one is cats equals 10, dogs equals 32. Local cats equals T dot cats. Local dogs equals T dot dogs. T dot turtles equals 60. And then print T dot hamsters. If we look up here, T dot hamsters does not exist. So it fires the meta table to see if the meta table has hamsters. That makes sense to me. So cats, we got it right here. We don't need to fire a meta table. Dogs, we got it right here. Doesn't need to fire a meta table. Turtles, we're setting the value right here. We just wrote it. So it'd be the same thing like saying uh, turtles equals 60 but sticking it up there in, or sticking it down here instead of up there. That totally makes sense. This one right here, print t dot hamsters. It's going to go look to see if this thing is indexed by a meta table. That totally makes sense. I get it. Yay. Now, typically meta methods will fire a function at the index meta method uh, and can also work in this way. However, if instead of setting the function at index meta method, uh, you can set another table, then uh, you can set another table then when the index meta method is fired it treats the process as such table is indexed with a key does the key correspond with a nil value in the table yes does the key correspond with a non nil value in the table in index method yes return that value value no return okay Table was indexed with a key. Does the key correspond with a nil value inside the table? Gotcha, okay. So, for example, hamsters. We responded to T, which is our table, for hamsters. We, we gave it a call. Is that value nil? Is it, is, does it exist? Yes, it does not exist. That is correct, hamsters doesn't exist. So then it comes down here and it says, does the key correspond to a non-nil value inside a table inside the, the index meta method? So then it goes over and it looks uh, up here at the top where we did the constructor right here. And we set the meta table. We look, does this have hamster in it? So it's a second table that it's looking at. And if it says yes, it will return that value, whatever hamsters was. If not, returns nil. So every time that you call something that it got a nil value on, it's fired a meta table of some kind or a, a response to a meta table. I hope that I'm not going over your heads. I, I hope that you're following along because I'm confused. <laughs> kind of. I get it. I understand it because I, I, I've done C sharp and I've done uh, C++ object oriented programming. So it's, it's classful, kind of. This is quite useful uh, to us as it allows us to set default values to the keys, not to have constantly redefine and repeat ourselves when making copies. In the case of the code above, such as self, the table we return from our constructor, we have access to all the constructors and methods that we've attached to vector three table. Say that we have the following method um, to the above code to create an object and run its method. So vector three magnitude equals local X, Y, Z equals self, self, self. So we're passing in whatever the object self is and it returns the math square root of X times X plus X or Y times Y plus Z times Z. <clears throat> okay, so it's the square root of all dimensions to the second power Add together. I think that's, is that the right math? That could be the right math. I don't know. Can I zoom this in? We can zoom that in too. Wow. Uh, say that we are adding the following, creating it. Vector magnitude. All right. Um, the process is treated as such. V was indexed. Wait. V was indexed with meta table. Okay. Local V equals vector. 3 dot new one two three and then we do v magnitude okay v was not specifically 
told what magnitude is. So it goes to see what vector 3's, or this object, has as far as a function of magnitude. This is inside the meta table. Was index, uh, v was indexed by magnitude, uh, magnitude key. Does the key correspond to a nil value in V? Yes. The key uh, Does the key correspond to a non-nil value inside vector 3? Yes. Return that value. So, a non-nil value, meaning magnitude is defined inside vector 3, which this is an instance of. Thus, colon magnitude is a method called on V, which is actually has values for properties X, Y, Z, and as such, we get a corresponding result. There is a lot more to be said about OOP, and what I have explained has barely scratched the surface. Some other languages force you to use OOP and have much richer set of features compared to Lua. If you want to further explore OOP in Lua, I recommend that you read the following post on the dev forums. Um, I'm not going to leave a link for that because I'm going to leave a link for this entire creating a furniture placement system inside the description down below. Just hit that show more button, look, see where it's at, hold control and click on it. That way you stay on the video and you get a copy of the webpage. You can do all this stuff yourself if you wanted to just jump into the studio and start programming. Here we go. Um, all that being said is still not quite the answer, uh, is I still have not answered why use OOP. My answer, I personally enjoy it and it forces me to organize my code into a modular and reusable way that, that can be combined together for a variety of complex tasks, which is something I probably should do. That being said, there's positives and negatives for everything. So use everything. So use what works for you. For me, I like straight code and I like being able to call methods and functions inside one singularity. So uh, grid placement. Finally, we can get into the purpose of the blog post. Before uh, we even start about specifics, let's lay out a few things for the placement system to do. We want to constrain objects to the placement on a flat surface. Filtering enabled friendly. Save any placements that we make so they are there when we rejoin the game. The ability to clear any objects that we have placed. In this section, we're mainly going to be focusing on, oh gosh, look, we're, we're, we haven't even touched. Ooh, I, might, I might have to make a series out of this. Ooh. Yeah, we're definitely gonna make a series out of this. We're 37 minutes in, guys. <laughs> I am so, so sorry. Uh, I, I hope I hope this is fun. I hope this is what you're looking for because I'm gonna keep doing these. Um, if I had not gotten such the powerful response that I did yesterday to um, to my lumber make a game, let's make a game, Lamag, um, I probably would not be doing this today. I would not be doing this. I would probably be building something on lumber, um, but my lumber, I don't have a good placement system. I've come up with some things and it's kind of cool, but it's not exactly what I want. So I'm, I'm using this as a jumping point into the next part of what my lumber is. So if you were wondering what's the point of me doing this, it's to get a better understanding of meta tables and to use modular scripts inside my lumber. Thank you everyone for being here. Oh, uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all the cool things I'm supposed to call out at the end of the videos. I love you guys very much. Have a great night, and we'll continue here when we leave, when we come back. Well, not here specifically, but where we left off. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Outro. <sighs>